Hello, hello out there in Baseland. It's Jeff from jeffrey-thomas.com and let's go ahead and walk through my base tab for Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. So make sure you are requesting this off the website and I will send it to you and then we can make sense of my scribble. Uh, Merry Christmas Eve, by the way. Hope you're having a good one, wherever you may be. Um, let's start with the intro. We'll take it nice and slow and then I'll come back in and break down some details. So. Two, three, four. There's your intro. That's all you get. Four measures, and then you're into the verse. Back up to the top of the verse, we'll take ending two. Okay, now we're on to the fourth line. So there's your page one, and much of the same content on page two. So classic tune, and uh, what's going on with the feel? Well, the feel is constant triplet feel. Your eighths, right? We are not playing classical. This is not Mozart. We're not going one and two and three and four, and it's one and two and three and four, and so. How do you get that feel? Well, you want to be able to count triplets. How do you count triplets? Here's how I do it. So, this is our beat. One, two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Why do I count one triplet, two triplet, three? Because I want to identify the beat number. I don't want to go triplet, triplet, or chocolate, strawberry, pineapple, uh-uh. It doesn't tell you where the beat is. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with anything that's got triplet feel, eighths, reggae, blues, pop, jazz, whatever, funk, hip hop, um, you are swinging the eighths or triplet feel eighths. And the thing that's tricky about it is a lot of times musicians will just count eighth notes and you're if, if you're not hip to that situation, you may go, well, why are they're counting eighth notes, but they don't sound like eighth notes. So here's how you get the triplet feel. We'll just use the second string open. Okay, so I do, when I'm showing my students how to do this, we just count triplets, okay? And we go like one triplet, two triplet, three triplet. A lot of times in the jazz, method books for high school, they'll, they'll actually call this long short, which is weird, but it makes sense at the same time because you're going like one trip. So those two notes are held and then let, you know what I mean? So those, the first note is longer than the other one, but if you're, you don't want to think of it that way. You want to be able to get down to the, the real deal and, and understand that this is the beat and the let of a triplet. One triplet, two triplet. Okay, so that's the feel. And then it just gets weird because nobody counts it like that. They always just go one and two and three and four. And so that should be going on in your head constantly with this tune. So if we take a look at the first measure and I count it, it's gonna be one, two, and three E. Now there's a 16th to a dotted eighth. Three E, so be hip to that as well. 
and then beat four is an eighth rest on beat four, and then the remaining part of the triplet. Four triplet, one, next measure, two, and three, and there's a grace note slide from four to six. Second measure again. One, two, and three, and four triplet, one, two, and three, four triplet, one, two, and three, four triplet, Okay, and then that's pretty much a motif that he, the bass player has on this. Um, let's go to ending two for the verse. So it's going to start here. One, two, and three, four triplet. Okay, now let's cruise into the fourth line. This is sort of like the bridge of the tune. One, two, and three, and... So once again, we've got another grace note slide. Grace notes, if you're not hip to grace notes, instant without time. So a slide, a hammer on, a pull off, a bend. Right? Right? Whatever the case may be. Um, it is instant without time. In this case, we're sliding from seven to nine and it's on beat three. So check it. One, two, and three, three, I'm not playing around at all on that slide. It is right on beat three. You do not count the seven. There's no value given to the grace note, if that makes sense. So you're clocking three, one, two, and three, and four, triplet, triplet, one, and two, and three, and so we got another grace note slide there from four to six. On beat three, three and four. One, two, and three, four, triplet, one. I'm on the fifth line now, sorry. One and two, triplet, one, two, triplet. Second measure, fifth line. One and two, and. So we got a dead note right there on that four. That's, uh, I would just place the finger over it and get like a little dead note just on that note one and two and three e four and one and two and three e four triplet now last line the signature lick one two come up to seventh position this is basically like a e major pentatonic scale so two triplet three triplet four triplet again on that climb Two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay, then we hit the second measure of the last line. One E, two. So one E, two sixteenth notes, two, three, and four. Okay, and that's pretty much the rub on the whole tune. Um, couple things about left hand, um, whether to use the third finger or the fourth finger on notes. I, I usually like let my students feel what's best for them, but when we go into like, for example, the last measure of the second line, I'll go first finger, third finger, and then my fourth, because I don't want to roll there. Sometimes it's cool to roll, sometimes you want the notes really clear. If you use an individual finger for the notes, it's going to be much clearer. And then he does the same thing here. First measure on the uh, third line. So instead of rolling the third, I'll use my first here, then my third, and then my pinky. So stuff like that is, you know, it's not in stone, whatever's best for the player. A lot of times here in um, first position, the frets are, you know, the temperament of the frets is really wide, so people like favor the pinky instead of the third finger. But it just depends on what you're doing. There's no real right or wrong, okay? Um, and that walks you through page one and hopefully talks about some things that may have been lingering in um, in how the music is written and then how it's going to be counted, right? So uh, enjoy the lesson and please give me a subscribe and a comment and I will catch up with you on the next lesson.